Okay, we're moving forward now with video number five. In this video, we're going to deploy the actual domain controllers that are part of our solution. So we're going to break up the virtual machine deployments into three different videos because I am going to show you how to deploy uh, virtual machines with PowerShell, with JSON templates, and with the portal itself. Now, in this first video, we're going to deploy the domain controllers. And the domain controllers are basically uh, here. And I have put them inside of a domain controller availability set, or I'm going to put them inside of a domain controller availability set. And we're going to deploy two DCs, DC01, DC02. Uh, both of these are going to be D series machines. They're actually DS2 machines, so they can take advantage of premium storage. So let's go ahead and create our availability set first. The way virtual machines work is if you create them without adding them to a an availability set, uh, you, you can't add them later. So we're going to create an availability set first, then we're going to deploy our virtual machines inside of that availability set. So let's uh, go down to availability sets. I've already created a shortcut here. I just marked it as favorite. And we're going to create an availability set for our domain controllers. Now the purpose of a of an availability set is basically to keep your virtual machines apart on separate infrastructure so that if Microsoft takes down infrastructure for maintenance or if there's a power or network failure, uh, we can be assured that other virtual machines in that availability set are in a different location. So let's call this one AV set DC. The first choice we have here is fault domains. How many fault domains do we want? Fault domains are about power and networking. So if power goes down, uh, to a particular rack or switch, uh, then uh, if we deploy two domain controllers, we can be sure that we have two separate fault domains. They'll be put, put into different fault domains. Therefore, a power outage or network outage shouldn't affect both of them at the same time. Update domains are the same thing, uh, except they are about up updates to the infrastructure. So if Microsoft does updates in Azure to infrastructure, patches, hosts, that sort of thing, uh, we can ensure that our VMs will not be affected by those either. Now, these numbers can go much higher because we can put in all sorts of virtual machines. So if we had a web service that we wanted to scale out to 10 and we wanted those to be in separate fault domains and update domains, we have some ability to ensure uh, we are in three different fault domains and we can go all the way up here to 20 update domains. I'm just going to put it at two because it doesn't make sense with two domain controllers to uh, make that any higher. And I'm going to use my ADFS deployment resource group and of course deploy to West US2. I'm going to click create here. It's going to go through the validation and it's going to complete the deployment. Now while we're waiting for that deploy to deploy, let's switch over to PowerShell because we're going to deploy our virtual machines for our domain controllers using PowerShell. Uh, the reason I want to do that is because I want to set a private IP address on them. Uh, and so we really need to do that with PowerShell to be the most effective. Okay, so uh, we've been through some of these scripts before. If you look at the hub benefit script, it's very similar to this. I'm just going to select a block of these commands and run them all at once. We're basically setting credentials for the username that will be the administrator on the virtual machine. And we're also going to uh, provide the name of the virtual machine. You can see there is edu dc one Our resource group name is going to be ADFS deployment. We are going to use our ADFS EDU01 storage account here. And what I'm doing here is I'm creating a disk name that has a naming convention. So I'm using the VM name plus OS disk. So that way when I look at my uh, VHDs, I can be sure uh, what that VHD belongs to. For my OS disk URI, this is the location uh, where the uh, virtual machine is going to be placed. And so I'm putting it in the VHDs folder of that storage account and then using that variable we just set for the OS disk name. Here I'm going to create my availability set. And it, of course, I already did do that. And that's going to be uh, used. Uh, when we create our virtual machine. So I'm not actually creating the availability set, I'm just setting uh, the name of the one that I want to use. 
And then, of course, the location of the virtual machine is going to be West US 2. The next thing I'm going to do here is uh, I have a couple of options. Do I want to deploy my virtual machine using an Azure image, uh, which is uh, this section here, or do I want to use the hub benefit and bring my own image? Uh, I'm going to actually use the Azure image in this case. So I'm just going to set the parameters for the publisher, the offer, the SKU, and the version. And if I don't know what those are in advance, this get Azure VM image command will show me what's available. What I typically do is I run that and then I find the latest version of an image that's available. In this case, uh, August 12th. I update my version number with that and then uh, I set those parameters or those variables. So uh, we've set those now. I'm going to skip this next one because that's only for using the hub benefit. If you need instructions on how to use the hub benefit, uh, there is a video for that uh, in the same blog uh, using the the Azure hybrid use benefit. Now we're going to create a virtual network adapter for this virtual machine. Uh, we're going to place it in the EDU nets VNet that we created. We are going to place it in the production subnet that we've created. And then finally, the one thing I want to point out here is that I'm providing private IP address of 1.5. This is what makes that address static. And that's definitely what we want on a domain controller. So let's run this command, or this set of commands. It's going to go ahead and create our vNIC, and it's going to give us a handle to it for our VM configuration later on. All right. So I'm going to move down my PowerShell command here, or commands. And the next thing we're going to do is define our VM configuration. So this is basically defining everything about what this virtual machine will look like when we create it. So what's the name going to be? What's the size? It's standard DS2 V2. Uh, what is the availability set? That's where we're stealing the ID of the availability set we created just earlier. Uh, here's where we say or, or tell Azure what the operating system is going to be. Uh, we're going to uh, provide a source image, which is all that information we gathered just a minute ago. We're then going to set uh, the OS disk properties, the name of the disk, uh, the uh, uniform, uniform resource uh, information. Our create op option is from image. And for this virtual machine, because it's a domain controller, I want to change this caching option to none because that's the recommendation for domain controllers. Uh, also, if I wanted to bring my own image, this is where I would put in the source image URI information that we gathered uh, from the variable above. And I'll just scoot over here so you can see that. It's just basically supplying the source image URI. Finally, we are going to add our network interface that we created uh, just a moment ago into this configuration. We're going to set the VM boot diagnostics uh, configuration. And we're going to set the storage account for our VM boot diagnostics. Now, this is kind of important because our diagnostics cannot go into a premium storage account. So I'm basically saying use this storage account instead, which is a standard storage account. So let's run that configuration. Uh, basically, again, this is just setting all the parameters, what this VM will look like. And then finally, we're going to create our new VM. So I'm going to click on this run command, and we'll let this run for a few minutes, and we'll come back and we'll finish up. Okay, now that our VM is deployed, I wanted to check out the objects we've created so far and show you some of the properties. So here in my ADFS deployment resource group, I can see my AV set hyphen DC, our availability set. And if I check it out over here on the right, you can see that my EDU DC01 is running in that availability set. My actual domain controller itself, EDU DC01, if we check that out, we can see that uh, it is a standard DS2 V2 virtual machine. We can see that it's running. Uh, also, if we take a look at the adapter that was created, we can see that we have an IP address of 172.16.1.5 that we set in the script. We can see that it's in the production subnet. And something else I wanted to quickly point out here is under our EDU diagnostic storage account, we can see if we go to our blobs, We'll be able to see that we have 
a container for the boot diagnostics. And you can see that it's uh, named boot diagnostics and it has the name of our uh, virtual machine as well. And if I back out of that, I also wanted to quickly point out that if we go into our storage account, which is our premium storage account, we should have a container here called VHDs. And inside that container, we can see that we have our OS disk with the name that we provided. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead uh, and deploy my second domain controller, and then we will proceed with our ADFS servers. Yeah.